Welcome back. Well, it's been a crazy busy summer of transfer news, and it means it's a perfect time to check in with our guy, the busiest man in the world, Fabrizio Romano. Um, Charlie asked you before we Ciao. came on. He said, he's like, he's like, is this slowing down for you at all? And you were like, oh no, 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 no. You've never been been busier. What's your what's your life like right now? No, it's only on my phone. There is no normal life. <laughs> no. <laughs> And no that's normal it. For the life. Next four weeks, it's, then in September it will be normal. Oh God. Okay. Well, Godspeed. <laughs> um, let's. Okay. So let's chat about some of the things that are keeping you so busy. I want to start with uh, Harry Kane. The rumors is that he is close to signing a deal with Bayern. What's What's the latest there? What can you tell us? Yeah, there is a meeting today in London. It's an important meeting right now between Bayern board, there is the director, Mark Koneppe, the CEO, Dress, and all the people from Bayern, meeting with Tottenham chairman Daniel Levy. This is a very important meeting because Bayern hope to accelerate this week, to get the deal done this week for Harry Kane, so they will improve their proposal in direct talks with Tottenham. They already had two bids rejected uh, from Tottenham. It was 70 million euros plus add-ons, 80 million euros plus add-ons. Tottenham always said no. They still hope to keep Harry Kane at the club, but Bayern today will try again. So let's see what happens there. Bayern feel that Harry Kane wants the move. Thomas Tuchel is really pushing to have him. And keep an eye also on PSG, because behind the scenes, PSG, if this Bayern deal collapses, they could be ready to enter the race. So hurricane week is going to be really crucial. Fab, can you give us an update on this, this crazy fiasco with, with Mbappe? Killing Mbappe could get a loyalty payment that's obviously massive, but also wants to leave, or PSG want him to leave because he's not going to commit himself to the, to the club. Where do you see this playing out? Does he do a loan? Is, it, is there a club that's willing to take him? Or, or is Real Madrid willing to pay a certain number that PSG would allow him to leave? Or, or what, what do you think is the next step? I think it's very clear that for Paris Saint-Germain, this is over. So even in case Kylian Mbappé decides to reject every single destination or in case he doesn't agree uh, any deal this summer, they are prepared to... Um, put Mbappé on the bench for the whole season. So the message is very clear. He's out of the project at PSG because they wanted Mbappé to sign a new deal and they always told him, new deal or leave the club immediately. So that was the message from the club and remains the message from the club. What happens now is that PSG are waiting for Real Madrid. And my feeling is that Real Madrid want to win in this story after what happened one year ago. Remember that one year ago, Real Madrid were really disappointed with what happened with Kylian Mbappé. They were expecting Kylian Mbappé to join the club in summer 22, and they decided to extend in a surprise move with, uh, with Paris Saint-Germain. So now they want Kylian Mbappé to join on their conditions. And at the moment, there is still no bid from Real Madrid. So the feeling is that Real Madrid could enter this race, but later this window. And so let's see how much they will offer. Let's see what kind of bid they will do. It's a complicated strategy game, but Paris Saint-Germain sources important sources at PSG feel that Kylian Mbappé only wants to go to Real Madrid and he already agreed a contract with Real Madrid for summer 2024 on a free. So he's not speaking to any other club from Saudi, from Europe, from England, nowhere. He wants to go to Real Madrid. This is the feeling at Paris Saint-Germain. You know, Fabrizio, you could really help me out if you just tweet that he's going to Arsenal. You know what I mean? Just throw a couple of those <laughs> emojis in there. I think it'll help. I want to ask about Yunus Musa. Uh, it's supposedly yeah. a done deal going to AC Milan. It's not exactly a done deal. Where do we stand right now? It's done. It's done in terms of verbal agreement. Everything was agreed on Sunday between uh, AC Milan and, uh, and Valencia. 20 million euros packages, 18 million euros plus two in addons. So everything has been agreed between the two clubs. I think today, tomorrow, they will try to sign all the documents and then the player could arrive uh, in Italy tomorrow or maybe on Wednesday. But the deal is, is agreed. Musa agreed a five-year deal. So also on personal terms, everything is okay between Yunus Musa and Milan. He only wanted Milan because he had some possibility in Germany. He had some possibility also in England with nothing at Forest, Fulham, West Ham interested, but he wanted to play Champions League football with Milan, and so deal is done. I think it will be official on Wednesday. Fabrizio, man, amazing to see you again. Uh, my question is yeah. for, for Balogun. Uh, what, what do you think? Uh, where is he going to end up? What's the story? Will he remain in Arsenal? If he does, uh, because I, I heard Inter, if he doesn't go to Inter, where, wh wh who will Inter look for to, as a centre forward position? Yeah, that's a good question because um, I think he's not staying at Arsenal. The player wants to go, uh, not because he's not respecting Arsenal, but he wants to play. And he knows that Arsenal with Gabriel Jesus and Dean Ketia on a new long-term contract is complicated to find space. And that's why he wants to go and he wants to leave on a permanent transfer. So now it's on Arsenal to agree terms with any club. 
I can tell you that from what I understand, Balogun is the top target for Inter. So the striker they want to replace Romero Lukaku is Fowler in Balogun. Now they need to reach an agreement with Arsenal. It's not that easy because Arsenal want more than 40 million euros for Balogun. Inter were hoping to strike a deal around 35, 40, but at the moment it's not enough to convince Arsenal. So conversations will continue. Let's see what happens there. If it's not going to be Balogun, I will keep an eye on Gianluca Scamacca from West Ham. Italian striker, Inter know him so well, and so could be the plan B for Inter. But the priority is following Balogun. Fabrizio, uh, real quick, when it comes to uh, Balogun, I noticed that his the valuation is pretty low. When you look at Manchester United, how much they paid for Rasmus Hoyland, uh, 72 million pounds, a player that's only yeah. scored nine goals. Why do you think there's such a low uh, valuation placed on Balogun? Because the player wants to go and the player decides. Uh, in this case, the player is really desperate to go. Uh, he is not going to sign a new contract at Arsenal, and so the message is very clear. He understands that Arsenal decided to trust Ed Inketia and obviously Gabriel Jesus uh, as important strikers for their project, and so he wants to try something different. That's why I think Arsenal are not in the position to ask for 75 or 80 million euros as Atalanta did for, uh, for Rasmus Hoyland, who had a very long contract and was a crucial player for Atalanta. So I think that's the difference, but I agree with you. Probably Balogun in terms of transfer value you could be something around at least 60 million euros. Incredible. Fab, what's the latest on Matt Turner? I know as the backup with Arsenal, Arsenal are now f flirting with the idea of, of approaching uh, Raya from, from uh, the Premier League. So where do you see Matt Turner ending up if, if that's the case? Yeah, we have to see if all the pieces of this domino uh, will go in the right place in the next days, but it's a possibility for Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest had contacts with Arsenal to ask about the conditions of a permanent transfer for, uh, for Turner, so that's a concrete possibility. They had a long negotiation with May United to bring back Dean Henderson, but there is still no agreement, and so they decided to contact Arsenal for Matt Turner, and Arsenal decided to contact the agents of David Raya as a possible backup goalkeeper, but not that backup because you could create competition to Aaron Ramsdale. So there is this domain of goalkeepers around Europe, also involving Bayern, because David Raya was in the list at Bayern, but now the deal is not happening. They are looking at Bono from Sevilla, so there is a goalkeeper's domino again, but let's see what happens with Turner, with Nottingham Forest, really interesting. Fabrizio Romano, we know you are a very busy man. We appreciate your time. Go get some sleep, okay? <laughs> I will try. Some more Thank espresso. You. <laughs>